One of the things that I like about National Review and always liked about National Review is that we weren't just there to go off to the left, which we do, but we were also there to police our own side. Um, and I've tried to keep that up. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV and we're talking with Charles W. Cook. He is the newly appointed editor of National Review Online and the author of The Conservatarian Manifesto. Thanks for talking to us, Charles. Thank you for having me. You are also originally from Britain until you uh, migrated this way. What's your take on Brexit? I was pro. I was uh, pleased. I was in England. I didn't expect it to happen. I'd hoped it would happen for probably 20 years, long before I was political, actually. Is there anything good about the EU um, that gets lost if England moves out of it? That's the debate. So I'm going to tell you first why I was in favor of it, and then we can come on to that, because sure. that's a really important point. I've been in favor of Britain's leaving the EU for a long time because I'm in favor of sovereignty. To me, if you are going to have a parliament, you should be bound by that parliament. On this, I was with the British socialist Tony Benn. You've got to be able to defeat the people who govern you. Probably the only thing I ever agree with him on. And he said it would be theft of public rights uh, to uh, say to somebody, vote for me and I will look after your interests. Oh, actually, I've uh, loaned those powers elsewhere. Uh, now, uh, there seems to have been uh, a small majority in Britain in favor of that proposition. But there's now going to be an almighty fight as to what the parliament does with that power when it's repatriated. But I think for many people who voted for it, this was a question of outcomes. They thought, well, if we leave the EU, we get rid of free migration. If we leave the EU, we get rid of the free trade agreements. Uh, if we leave the EU, we get rid of this regulation or that regulation. Now, that's not necessarily the case. One of the things that a lot of people were trying to do is to uh, take the, the energy and the animus and the anger behind Brexit and say, okay, this is parallel to something going on with Trump. National Review back in December, of course, came out with a never Trump issue. Is there a meaningful parallel between these events or the energy? And if it's good to Brexit in England, is it, you know, does that mean that Trump should be given a second look in America? On the latter question, no. There is a parallel, but there's also a difference. So the parallel is that some of the people who voted for Brexit are annoyed with uh, what they think of as negative globalization, they're annoyed with immigration, they're annoyed with free trade. Um, they think that Britain is being sold out to this invisible cabal. And I think you see that within the Trump movement. Um, where it's different is there's also a lot of, uh, if you will, never Trumpers who would have been pro-Brexit because they would have believed in uh, old-fashioned ideas like sovereignty uh, of sort of constitutional integrity. I don't think personally it helps Trump. Firstly, Britain is a different country, has a different culture. Um, secondly, it's a different question, do you wish to change the way your country relates with the world in terms of its fundamental sovereignty from do you wish this person to be president? Right. And I think what we're seeing thus far, at least, is people don't want Trump to be their president. Um, in your stimulating and popular book, The Conservatarian Manifesto, who are the conservatarians going to vote for in election 2016? Well, that's a fascinating question. I think the Republican Party essentially uh, read my book insofar as it did at all and said, let's not do this. Um, <laughs> so anyone who liked the book... Is I think you're giving <laughs> them too much credit for reading. But anyone who, who, uh, who liked the book probably is not voting for Trump. I think that Gary Johnson is popular. But I also think there are a lot of people, at least in my email inbox would suggest, there are a lot of people who read my book who want to reclaim the Republican Party. But certainly can't do so until November. You were recently named the uh, editor of National Review Online, which was uh, really one of the first and still one of the best, most uh, certainly most traffic, but also most provocative websites for a political magazine. What direction do you see the uh, site moving under your editorship? And what are areas, new areas or new uh, writers, new things that you're looking to do? Well, I think we have a pretty good uh, offering as it is. Um, certainly our position against Trump is unlikely to change. Um, one of the things that I like about National Review and always liked about National Review is that we weren't just there to go off to the left, uh, which we do, uh, but we were also there to police our own side. Um, and I've tried to keep that up. Uh, I think it's extremely important to call out um, people who are nominally with you, whether it's because they're crony capitalists, whether it's because they um, are crooked, or whether it's because they're you know, uh, in hoc to somebody I think uh, in Donald Trump is a charlatan. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Also, I have a slightly more libertarian bent, so um, that'll probably shine through a little bit. National Review has always been uh, a, a magazine and a website that is 
uh, included a, a number of viewpoints. I hope that will continue. Um, but you know, the editor probably has some stamp on it, so uh, it should move slightly more in the libertarian direction. But I, I can't imagine that it will change too much because I think it was pretty good in the first place. All right. Well, thank you. We'll leave it there. Thank you. We have been talking with Charles W. Cook of National Review. He's the new editor of National Review Online and the author of The Conservatarian Manifesto. Thanks so much for talking. Yeah, thank you for having me. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.